Hey guys, look what I got. No, seriously, it's a George Foreman indoor outdoor grill is basically what it is. It's for those of you who are indoors right now because it's so cold or you got snow outside and you can't go outside. It's for those of you who might be a college student and there's nowhere outside to grill. Or for those of you who have an apartment and you can't grill outside, you can now do it inside. Let's open this up and take a look. Okay, so it's gonna take a little bit of assembly, so I'm gonna put this together really quick. But my only criticism is pulling it out of the box, be careful, because there's no way to pull pieces out one at a time. You gotta pull the whole thing out. And the moment you pull the whole thing out, everything falls apart. These things were falling out, these things were coming out. So be careful, okay? Go slow, have another person with you if you're gonna pull this out. It's not heavy, there's just no way to get your hands in because it's solid styrofoam, but the moment it comes out, it's game on, all right? All right, I'll be right back. We're gonna have this put together in just a second. Okay, so here it is. The hardest thing to do was to put the handle on the lid. It was just crazy because you couldn't, you had to press it up against the lid and then put a screwdriver underneath and oh, anyway, it doesn't really matter. I got it all together, not too bad. The other problem was, that's the instructions right there. So when they say put the two base legs together and click them in and there's like no pictures. You get one page of instructions. I will tell you this, you ready? Take a look. You got a lot of grilling space, pretty cool. The best built part of this whole thing is this heavy duty coil. The heating probe that's gonna go in it. This man, this cord is like super heavy duty, thick three prong. Uh, I wouldn't use a regular extension cord with this if you're gonna, if you have to extend it, but look how long it is. You really shouldn't have to in the kitchen. So I've cleaned the surface, I've sprayed it with non-stick. I know what you're saying, but it's already a non-stick surface. I don't care because spraying it with non-stick, I can clean it easier, twice as good. Heat's turned up to five. Let me show you what I'm cooking right now. This has gotta be a three pound chuck roast. I'm putting this thing to the test. It's gonna take a while to cook. That's why I'm putting it on high so we can get a good sear on the outside. So this thing's pretty hot. I can feel the heat up to here. So I'm sure the putting this on there it's gonna be just fine. All right, here we go. Oh yeah, little sizzle going on there. I'm not gonna cover it because I don't wanna cook the outside yet. I just wanna sear the outside. Let's see how hot this really gets and can it give me a good sear. Okay, you can see a little bit of smoke coming up off the bottom here, but nothing major yet. Should we peek? Should we see if we got anything going? It's been 10 minutes on this, on high. Oh, wow, look at that. Nothing like a little Nathan's hot dogs to throw on there. So it's been about, about three minutes closed. Let's lift it and see what it looks like. minutes it's it's more steam than smoke really okay I think those dogs are done let's take a look poof beautiful look at that those are nice you know they're done when they start busting at the seams I'm gonna hit this with a little bit of oil and I'm gonna start grilling some some onions Yeah, the suckers come along nicely. I got this somewhere between about 140 and 145, so it's gonna be rare to medium rare. But that cooked faster than I thought. I'm gonna let that set. This is unbelievable. So I was moving an onion over and it started pushing all this burnt stuff. Look at this. I moved the onion over and it did that. It slid over, look at this. That is not burnt to it at all. And I just, I wanted the onion over there to get some of that seasoning, some of that flavor. And as I moved it over, I noticed that nothing was sticking. All right, so let's first look into this, this hot dog. Beautiful. 
Love it. And you know if it does good with hot dogs, it does good with hamburgers. All right, let's cut into this. Take a look. Oh, wow. Not bad at all. Let's cut a little deeper. Oh my gosh, it's perfect. Okay, sometimes I review a product and I'm surprised. This is better than I thought when I started. I'm all, it's wobbly and you fell apart when you pull out of the box, all the pieces went everywhere. But this thing rocked. I cooked that three pound chuck roast in under like an hour, maybe less. I grilled hot dogs and onions next to it while it was cooking. Do you saw how much space? Uh, I'm just, I'm so excited. So first I'm gonna try the meat. And by the way, Chuck isn't like the best cut of meat. So it's not gonna be like filet mignon, unless you do my salt trick. If you haven't seen the salt trick, uh, you gotta look at the link down below. Mmm. 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 I forgot to show you this. It even comes with a cover. A heavy duty cover. This isn't no flimsy thing. This will hold up in weather. So you could set it outside, put the cover over it, and don't worry about it. When you need it, bring it indoors. Now, the last thing is I gotta show you how clean uh, it wipes up. I'm just gonna wipe it. I have plain paper towel. That's it. Nothing on it, no spray. Right here we go. Oops, gotta hold it, sorry. That might help. Still a little warm, so forgive me. Check that out. That's good. I'm not even done cleaning it, but that took no effort. Just wiped it with a paper towel. Okay guys, there it is. The George Foreman Indoor Outdoor Grill. Not only is it a thumbs up, I recommend to anybody with an apartment. Anybody, anybody, any college student. I'll have a link down below if you wanna get one. There's different dome colors, I believe. I'll have all that information down in the description box. You guys are awesome. George Foreman, you're awesome. And I'll see you on the next episode.